years as uh, an ascension guide and a liaison for the higher realms, bringing in information about the ascension. For the last seven years, I have been in service on Mount Shasta as a gatekeeper. I have been blessed to serve with thousands of light workers who are called to work with interdimensional gateways in order to call forth, expand, and activate and reconnect the crystalline grid system, which is in full support of the new Earth realities. It's kind of a unique skill set because it utilizes starseed DNA in order to activate these ancient structures and these structures that were put there for this period in time. It's like a best case scenario. If we hit the ascension timeline, then we can activate this stuff. And there's a whole subculture, many of you are involved in this, of light workers who consistently travel. Can we just see who's working on the grid systems all the time? Huge subculture of light, light workers constantly doing this for the last couple of decades. It's been going on for a long time. So what it does is it resurrects these uh, crystalline grid systems that support the New Earth realities. Now, Mount Shasta is a 14,000-foot dormant volcano in Northern California by the Oregon border. Has anybody been to Mount Shasta? Yes! I knew there was family here. Now, it used to serve as a root chakra, and it now operates as a crown chakra. So if you're looking at the old Earth chakra maps online, that's archaic information, we're done. It's now operating like a crown chakra. And Shasta is one of the major nodes for these incoming and outflowing Christed frequencies, and it's a very active interdimensional gateway. Now, I live for months at a time in the wilderness on the mountain. Um, I'm one of those people that just throws myself out there. So I'm camping in a simple tent away from everybody or in a hammock, and I've seen everything from bears, light ships, Syrian, Sasquatch, interdimensional vortexes, weird vibrational anomalies, light ships, light ships, light ships, beings, everything uh, in my time on Shasta because I do that for several months out of the year. In 2013, I spent nine months outside. So I really throw myself out there and was guided to do that. And I had no idea what Mount Shasta was even about when I, when I got there. I was just called from the other side of the country. You know, it's like one of those trips where it's like, I'm, I was in New York and I was called to, to this mountain that I had no idea what was going on with that. But you know, you pack up the car, no money, no house, no friends, no nothing, you, know, you just go. And the next thing you know, I'm talking to all, you, all of you. Seven years later, how does that work? <laughs> so, and I feel like, and, and just so you get to know me, if you're not familiar with my work, I'm a bit of an underdog. So um, I have had hundreds of contact and interdimensional experience on South Shasta, but I want to share some key consciousness-shifting experiences and provide some clarity on why this bridging activity, bridging activity of contact with other realms is an evolutionary phase in our ascension process. So I feel that we are done and done with the transformational phase of the New Age. And now we're going into a more expansive area experience of ascension or unity consciousness. The beloved Sufi poet Rumi has a beautiful poem called The Witness. And one of the lines states, the tools of the witness are truthfulness, keen seeing, and the night vigil. This is the witness the judge listens most carefully too. Now the judge in Rumi's poem is source, God. And we, as fractals of source, expressing as God in all these different scenarios, are um, serving as witnesses for source, the source, exploring all of itself, exploring what if I did this, what if I did that, what if I was a universe, what if I was a planet, what if I was an ascending human. All of that happens through us. And we can serve as good witnesses when we embrace these tools. This is especially applicable to the ET and contact conversation. Truthfulness, expressing what we see, hear, and feel from the heart. Sacredness rather than sensationalism. 
Second point, keen seeing, maintaining a clear vessel, embodying divine neutrality and unconditional love and divine perception. And the night vigil, demonstrating willingness and grace to have those magical moments under the night sky when we learn more about ourselves. Now we serve as both the experience and the witness for source. So it's happening at the same time. We're witnessing and having the experience at the same time in this big dream of the creator. And the divine human genome is unique because it provides the creator incarnate experience. That's why it's so desired, because it provides a multidimensional experience serving multiple realities, timelines, and densities simultaneously. So there's that multidimensional aspect to our beautiful 12-strand DNA that allows us to perceive and interact with several realities at the same time. So many of you <laughs> have had ascension experiences and authentic contact experiences, and it does require a genuine desire to be a good witness when you're getting into that contact, um, at that level of contact. And many of you have had experiences that dissolved the self-imposed veils. So let's encourage unity and transparency. So in this presentation, when you hear something that resonates, I want you to say, I am witness, out loud. So let's just practice. I am witness. I am witness. Like many of you, uh, my contact experiences began when I was a child. I had Yeshua coming to me at age four. I thought I was going to be an astronaut because I was flying around so much with people in white jumpsuits at night. I was convinced I was going to be an astronaut. <laughs> but at age 19, I experienced my first past life regression. And it was one of those classic regressions where you go back three journeys further and further back and then you ask a question of spirit. And if any of you have been through that, I am witness. Right on. Okay, and it's one of those where you... Uh, you step out of your body, turn around, and see what's going on, right? So the first two were kind of uneventful. A farmer who had lost his wife, a woman sitting on the edge of an ancient city with a friend. But the third one changed me. I step out of my body, land, right, land in that, whatever that timeline is. And I step out of my body, and I turn around, and I'm like, I'm an alien, and I'm looking at my ET self, and, and I can still feel it to this day. Step back into my body, and I'm like, all right, they're like, describe what you're wearing. I'm like, a blue sparkly thing with silver trim, and my eyes are really big. And <laughs> you know, and I'm having this full-on experience of being in that body. They're like, okay, describe the scene. And I look up, and I'm standing on the side of this giant mountain near the top, and there's all these people in white robes walking up the mountain and kind of disappearing into another realm. And I'm standing there with one hand on my hip, like, mission accomplished. Good job. You know? And, and it, it, it was very real. You know, this is a very real experience. So I'm standing there, and the guide says, ask your question. And my question was, I want, I want to know God. I want to feel God. I want to know the truth of source. And I look up with my big ET eyes, and the sky rips open, and all of a sudden I was just one with everything. You know, that beautiful feeling of that first sensation of being one with the whole universe and the cosmos was in me, and I was the cosmos, and it just felt that experience of oneness. Now, I, I wasn't a meditator yet, so it was my first experience of, of being God, of being one with God, and experiencing that truth of divine unity really embedded itself in my heart. Fast forward to 2013, I take a hike up to Southgate, which is about a 45 minute hike into the remote, no contact area, you know, your cell phone's out of service, you know. I'm up there by myself, hike through the meadow, hike up above the meadow and above the waterfall, and I get to a certain spot where I'm guided to open a gateway, and I stand there and I look up, and there's the vision from my past life regression that mountain. In that moment, time collapsed. And I felt my ET self, 
that I had felt in the past life regression, past self, ET, present self, guiding people up the mountain of ascension. You know, it was like past life guiding people up the mountain, present day working in as an ascension guide. And I also felt my future self, my higher self, who is involved in this upper level, higher realm operation of ascension. And it was just like time collapsed and I felt myself in all three places simultaneously. I am witness. Time collapsed and all of a sudden I got it. So that this interdimensional synchronicity allows us to perceive the unified self. The ET encounters or higher self experiences are usually, not always, other versions of ourself. We have to apply multi-dimensional thinking to everything at this point. But parallel, simultaneous realities of the Oversoul, the Oversoul has like 500,000 other human expressions surrounding you in these realities. So you're constantly interacting with different soul groups and other Oversoul groups. This photonic order allows perception of past, present, future merging in zero point, which is a very strong part of our ascension process, is the ability to get into zero point and be able to perceive multiple dimensions at once. Ascension into reunifying with source awareness or the oneness state. It allows us to experience the infinite self, which assists our task as masters. And our task as masters is to allow others to see the divinity in themselves. Let me share some examples of this unification process, which occurs with our ascension. We have multidimensional parallels in our service work. But I made, I made a choice early on that nothing else mattered but service. And wow, that's an, a great way to skate through life. If you get that in your heart, nothing else matters but service to the collective. Nothing else matters but service to God, to source, to all that is. Nothing else matters but service. If you make that your baseline frequency, if you make that your platform, I am witness, your journey will be so much easier. So much easier because that's kind of the point of all of this happening. So in 2012, I had what's called a gatekeeper initiation. I had already been there for a few months, but, and I was, uh, you know, back, back then, I was, you know, penniless, living on the mountain. It didn't, didn't know what was gonna happen next, just totally in the now, just vibing with that natural state that you get when you're living in the wilderness, just like, whatever, okay, okay, just show me, show me, show me. All these beautiful things happening. And then uh, I have a connection to the Brotherhood. So the Brotherhood came in. They're like, you're going to teach a class. And I'm like, I have no money. I have no camera. I have blah, blah. like, what, what are we going to do? And all of a sudden, this $1,000 donation comes in from Bulgaria. I was like, <laughs> OK. So I start teaching Ascension Path, which is like a foundational class that I teach. And that started back in 2012. And I'm about a month into Ascension Path. Following, again, following the service, following the calling, following the direction. And then I was meditating one morning, and all of a sudden, now my, granted, my uh, vision is, is very vivid. It's, it's very alive. Um, but I'm meditating, and all of a sudden, golden gates present, like big, giant, golden gates, like the pearly gates. I was raised Catholic, so I'm like, oh my god, this is it. Wilcock was right, 2012, oh my god. You know, <laughs> like I'm going, right? But, uh, but the golden gates open, and there's this harmonic and these gr this grandeur. And then I see just rows and rows of angelics, galactics, masters, like everybody I've been talking to for those years. You know, it's like 12 years at that point, just rows and rows of, of my team. You know, in, the, in this physical, with this big, beautiful music playing and everything. And everyone, and this is, this is a key if you're making contact, everyone always bows before they uh, do anything with me. But uh, all of them just bowing, and I'm like, oh, wow. This is, wow. It was over. I was just streaming tears through the whole thing. But they're like, you're a gatekeeper. You are the gatekeeper for this mountain. You, you know, and this is something that you will be learning, and you have to learn. 
And I was just overwhelmed by the experience. And the other point I want to make, too, is at the end of 2012, with the opening of that gateway, because it was not just the opening of the gateway within me to be able to, to interact in a clearer, more direct way or be able to teach gatekeeping and grid work the way that I do, but it was also the opening of um, the end of all of that bounce back karma stuff going into the light coming back. It was the end. That ended in 2012. So now all of our gateways were going to be, you were going to be able to do what you could do in the ancient days, go back to your star system. So that's been you know, operating for seven years now. But it was the opening of those stargates too. And they're like, we're going to teach you precision gatekeeping. And Shasta serves as part of the rainbow bridge system during the ascension window, the bridge between worlds. It has multiple cosmic stargates connected to Sirius, Pleiades, Vega, Andromeda, Arcturus, Solaris, the sun, uh, which is why gatekeepers see people as they transition. But we, we see people before they transition, especially if somebody's going to make uh, an impact on the collective, like I'm somebody, I received my intel in December for the year following, and that includes cosmic stargates, solar activity. They're like, how did you know there were going to be M flares in June, in December? Like that's how accurate some of that information gets on, uh, on the stargate systems. And it's largely because Shasta is one of those hubs. So if you're going to be a gatekeeper at that hub, it's like you, you inform the other gatekeepers when that activity is going to, uh, going to occur. But in 2016, prior to 2016, when all those celebrities were dying and everything, uh, I saw like, it was almost like flashcards, just like boom, 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 all these faces. And I'm like, oh my gosh, so many people are going to transition this year. And then a couple weeks later, like mid-January, um, like people will present if they're, if they're going, going to go through one of the gateways of Shasta, because it's a major node. And, and this man presents tall, thin, his face is so bright, I, can, I can't really make out his features, but he's got a big smile, shining blonde hair, and he's wearing bright blue. And my higher self in those situations, this is part of that merge that we get into with multidimensional consciousness, is the higher self will take over, so all of a sudden the higher self is communicating and saying, blessings, David, how may I assist you? And um, I'm looking, and all, he just l stares at me with these beautiful eyes, and I can feel this overwhelming amount of love, just love, love, love. Just I felt like I was in love. I was like, oh my gosh, you're so beautiful, you're so beautiful. And that you know, lower self is like, oh my gosh. Higher self is like, can we hear you sing one more time? And he just smiles and whoosh, just disappears. 18 hours later, the next morning, I get online, David Bowie had died. And I was like, oh my gosh, that was the singing David. It was just so beautiful. And I spent like the whole day before that just with this overwhelming feeling of love. But it's, it's that, I, I, I'm just trying to emphasize that Shasta is that kind of gateway. He went through the Syrian portal. Congratulations. So we had a graduate, right? <laughs> Uh, but like the past life vision with the white robes going into another realm, assisting others across the Rainbow Bridge is just part of my skill set, my light signature. But the lesson here is we have multidimensional parallels of service. Our mission comes forth when we step into divine service to the whole. We synchronize with what, with what we're doing in the higher realms and that larger operation of ascension when we go into service. And it makes us stronger conduits of the divine self. And I've learned that. Just surrender to it, allow the experience, and then you start having these experiences. It's not just Shasta. I'm just sharing some of the Shasta experiences that I've had as a gatekeeper. In the dualistic perspective, we used to categorize right, wrong, good, bad, light, dark, Pleiadian, Syrian, planet, star, 3D, 5D, 9D, etc. That's kind of a coping mechanism for density, an evolutionary step. In places like Shasta, where the realms blend, we practice our multidimensional existence. The dimensions overlap, and time dynamics get fluid, pliable. I was 
laying in my hammock near my campsite and saw Krishna talking to a seven-year-old version of myself. You see, masters come and go uh, in and out of timelines, you know. Jermaine's very strong there because it, it used to be the violet flame uh, pillar was kept there. Um, and now that's, that's diffused throughout the, the different gateways, so it's not just the thing. But it also means that I have to wear purple all the time, but they take away my violet flame license. <laughs> so, <laughs> but you get very coherent in the wilderness. Your awareness gets more acute, and you start synchronizing with the natural energies, and you begin to witness other realms of self. Like that interaction with Krishna, yeah, it's me, but it's also like another timeline experience, the master's coming in with lessons, you know. They're already in that bindi state. They're already in that unified state. You can see what's going on, and they've taught me, like, take a look at what's going on with the grid systems. Take a look at what's going on with the stargates. And the stargates are, like, outside of the galaxy. So when you pull back and you kind of merge with that, you're like, I can see it. I can see where the sun is, and I can see it's going to hit that point in the octahedron, and that's when the solar flash is going to happen. And I can see where, where that flow is, it, where it's not flowing from the Pleiades during this certain time and why, and it's going to, you know, make up for it through the Syrian gateway. And it's just like this, this beautiful uh, blending of all these different dimensions, because even the cosmic stargates, they're not a 3D thing. They're not a 5D thing. They're, they may not even be a 12D thing, because it's kind of formless when you get out there. But, uh, but one of my first nights on the mountain, just to make my point, one of my first nights on the mountain, I, I, I had kept seeing, of course, there's light chips everywhere. And can everyone tell the difference between a light chip and a satellite? Do we need to go over that? If it's traveling in a straight line and it, it looks like it, it powers up or beams at you, it probably just caught the sun over the curve of the Earth. So if it's going in a straight line, it goes, whoosh, probably a satellite. So, um, but communicate. You know, if you're out there looking for light chips or whatever, Use your heart magnet, you know, use, use your heart to communicate. Go, uh, you look like a satellite. You're going to have to wiggle a little bit or go off course or something like that. Otherwise, I'm going to dismiss you as a satellite. And they will move, you know, if it's... Uh, but here's the, here's the interesting part. So one of the first nights on the mountain, I kept seeing this big gold light ship, giant gold. And we have all these different colors. You know, I've seen like redwoods, you know, blue, silvery blue, I've seen them up in trees, you know, just kind of like hanging out, balls of light, or the big ones that come like right through my campsite, just like, boom. and you're just like, wow, that just happened. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's real. It can, it can be intense, but you, you get used to it. Um, and when you're synch synchronizing with, uh, with the natural kingdoms and everything, you start turning on all those extra strands of DNA, and then you start having these higher and higher communications with those other versions of yourself, and here's an example. So this big gold light ship keeps showing up. And I'm in my campsite one night, and I, I camp in like a circle of trees, sacred circle of trees. And it's all gridded out and everything. Everybody knows I'm there. And I'm having this really deep conversation with Source, just like talking to my higher levels, like, please help me uh, understand what... Uh, What the, what the connection is with me and these light ships and this blending of realms and this embodiment and the ascension and everything. I'm like, I want to understand why I don't feel, is it just because of like the early on past life regression thing that I have an understanding that, that those other realms are part of me? Like there's oneness, and the, but there's all this like blurry lines between the realms sometimes. And I was having, just having this deep meditation, and I talk out loud because there's nobody around. And big, I, I call this light ship Big Goldie. It's a technical term. <laughs> big Goldie comes in over my campsite and beams down at me. And I'm like, is that just beaming on? Yeah, OK, just beaming on me. All right, cool. And higher self goes, what were you just thinking? And I was like, well, I was asking about um, how there was how I was able to exist in so many different realms at the same time, and I look up and I'm having my aha moment. I'm like, "Oh my gosh, are you me?" 
and it beams down again, and then away, away it goes. And I was like, oh, okay, so I have an aspect of self who is on the ship that keeps showing up, because I'm a precision gatekeeper. It'll be a new moon, three o'clock in the morning, middle of winter. I'm out there all bundled up with my crystals, you know, and big Goldie keeps showing up. And there's nobody else around, you know, and the ship just keeps coming in, coming in, coming in. So then I understood, okay, so there's aspects of ourself that are on this ship, and, you know, my friends call me an ET magnet because when they sit with me under the stars, like all these ships start showing up. Um, but I noticed that not just the light ship activity started getting stronger, but my team started uh, getting stronger because I was kind of synchronizing with that natural rhythm and, of course, traveling all over the place doing gate work. You know, that, that is recognized. That kind of service work is recognized. So when you show up, like I show up at the edge of the Grand Canyon, they're like, welcome. I'm like, oh, my gosh. You know, people know who, who, you, know, who you are in the higher realms. And the other interesting thing that starts happening with, uh, with Shasta and these gateways is, is like, I, I can't, you know, even to this day, I'm still um, bewildered by the accuracy of how we can, uh, you know, I have to take a hike in the snow, which requires snowshoes, in the snow, back to this gateway, above sand flats, and for this certain activation, they're like, there's going to be seven M flares aimed at Saturn. And you got to, like, sit on the ground and be there. And, of course, you know, I sit on the ground, and I've got my crystals out and everything, and I'm like, and they're like, okay, do it. And I'm, you know, doing what I do to, oh, I won't do it now. <laughs> but I, I'm doing what I do to, uh, to open the, the threads through the cosmic stargates, and they have the exact same moment, just like M flare. M flare, M flare, the exact same time I was on the mountain. And I was like, my God, this is all getting like so synchronized. And I don't, I don't identify with like, oh, it's me, I opened the star, you know. It's not like that. It's not like that for me at all. It's just like, okay, I, I understand the big cosmic operation that's going on here uh, with ascension. But it's all training us for unity consciousness. Um, there's... When I was up at Ski Bowl, you know, that, that medicine wheel that I showed you earlier, there was one night where um, there's this thing that happens in Shasta. It'll be a cloudless night, absolutely dark sky, nothing out but stars, and all of a sudden you start seeing silent flashing, almost like a, like a lightning flash would be, but there's no sound, there's no clouds, there's no, all of a sudden flashing, flashing, and it gets closer and closer. The whole sky starts lighting up. And the first time I saw this, I was like, there's no clouds. What's going on? You know, is this like a storm coming in, some kind of weird anomaly? Because I'd seen a lot of anomalies at that point. But probably one of the weirdest things that, that happened, which is why I want to include it in here, because it's kind of fun. Flashing, coming in, coming in over the bowl, coming in over the bowl. And I'm like, okay. And this is, this is the message that I always receive when something weird is about to happen. Stay a little longer. <laughs> <laughs> And this is about pushing up your own, uh, against the walls of your own fears, is, is this second point that I want to make. It's not just about the unification. It's like when you're out there, I'm a woman alone in the wilderness. Is it a mountain lion? Is it a bear? Is it a Sasquatch? Is it a Syriad? Is there weirdness going on? You know, I'm like, stay a little longer. Push up against the fears. I know it's getting uncomfortable. It's getting cold. It's getting weird. The sky is flashing. Stay a little longer. Stay a little longer. They're like, gatekeeper, stay a little longer. I am witness. And when you stay a little longer, I was entitled, thrilled to watch, to witness. Um, a, it's like a laser light show. So there were like 20 different laser beams that came down and gridded the whole bowl, just like, like this went on for like a minute. Shooting, 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 crisscrossing, just like, like gridding the whole area, and then one big wide beam like, like this shooting out of whatever it was that was up there, probably just a massive ship cloaked because I, I couldn't see it. It was like, just looked like sky. And beams, this whole big beam across Green Butte, which is an entryway to inner earth. It was just like, <laughs> and then flashing, flashing, fla disappears. And this happens over and over again. So, grounded person doing grid work, right? Gridding, 
gating, clearing, opening, higher levels, gridding, clearing, opening. It's the same thing. It's a, it's a dimensional experience, a dimensional reflection. And I'll even be like, I was in ecstatic dance, dancing, all of a sudden I can't dance anymore. I sit down to meditate. Shasta. Just the mountain will flash at me, just like a big picture of Shasta. Shasta, you know, and my, my visions are like when beings come in, they're pretty strong. It's like getting hit in the face, you know. <laughs> it's like, boom, Shasta. I'm like, what? It's like 8.30. Boom, Shasta. Okay, okay. And like the, for me, the, the pull, like when the mountain wants you up there, the pull is like, you can't deny it. So I'm like, okay, here we go. You know, pack up all my stuff, go up there. What's happening? Flashing. Flashing, flashing. And the, there were folks down in town that said, hey, did you see that flashing last night? You know, so people see it. You know, it's not just me. Flashing, flashing, flashing. And all of a sudden, Big Goldie just materializes out of nowhere. <laughs> um, but it's, this is these kind of experiences and, and even your contact experiences can train you how to face your own fears of the other because it is, you know, unity consciousness includes all this stuff that's going on. So it does train us to break through those self-imposed barriers. No talk about Shasta would be, incom would be complete without <laughs> telos, what is below. Telos is a Greek word meaning the goal or end game, an intention for an end result. Just let that land. Telos is an intention for an end result. From a multidimensional perspective, I was provided with uh, an experience. I was laying in my hammock up uh, near Sand Flat. Beautiful, beautiful day. I think it was a full moon. Just gorgeous. You know, you get a big view of Shasta and everything. And I'm laying there, and it's 2014, and it's been two years of camping outside. And I'm like, how, how much longer do I have to be here? Like, how much longer do, do I just camp forever? Is this a thing? I just like wander and then find a place in the winter. Is this just what gatekeeping is about? And I was just asking an honest question of my team. And, and everyone on the other side of the veil starts laughing. <laughs> Which is always comforting. <laughs> and they're like, you live here. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I live here, like, uh, homeless all summer long, and then you go in the winter. It's a hard, most challenging, probably the most challenging little spiritual community I've ever experienced. Just like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. I live here. It's like the weirdest place I've ever lived before. And they're like, no, 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 no. You live here. And they open up this vision going into the mountain and there were all these crystalline templates. And they look like, oh, if you ever get one of those flat gold plates of sacred, you know, where they plate the sacred geometry that you can hang in the window. Imagine that only big and like crystalline and like a torus. And it's sitting there and there's all these layers and layers and layers of that imprinted with future intentions for highest possible outcome. Sometimes they look like a city. Sometimes they look like a, a future New Earth world. Sometimes they look like an ancient crystalline city. And they, it's like they could project a holographic reality. So it's all these future intentions that apparently I was part of planting those things in the mountain. And it's DNA-based, so like I said earlier, when your starseed DNA shows up where you did something, earlier on the timeline, boom, it activates. They're like, that's why you're here. You live here. And, I, and the, the inner earth folks, um, whom I have seen, it's a very real experience for me, but they're like, please don't misinterpret inner earth civilizations as something that's like fixed and carved out of a mountain or looking for a door. It's, it's not like that. It's a dimensional experience. It changes constantly. The inner earth folks have, have shown up. Remember that place where I had my, my revelation up on Southgate? 
that's the first place that they presented. So that's the place where I had the past life regression. That's a place where I had my aha moment. That's a place where the gateway where I put down the crystals and all of a sudden I hear behind me footsteps. I'm like, there is nobody else here, right, in the physical. And I hear footsteps and I turn around and for some reason they're making footsteps but they don't hit the ground. I think the footsteps are for our benefit so you don't freak out. Hey, <laughs> just kind of like a warning. Um, but, you know, cl classic, dressed in luminous white robes, the long hair, the whole thing, and there are just three of them. They're just staring at me, watching me do my gate work. And me, because I've had so many experiences, I'm like, blessings, beloveds, would you like to join me? And they just whoosh, disappear. So they've, and they've done that a couple of times, where it's just like easing their way into my reality but, of course, there's an, an extreme amount of dream time activity, even flying ships into the mountain, you know, all that kind of experience um, has presented. I actually got a training exercise once. They're like, try not to flinch when we go into the rock, you know. And I was like, and I would, you know, the first couple of times I would like freak and the, they're like, oh, try again, you know, because the ships are intuitive. So it's like, try again, try not to get the human to freak out, you know, it's just like. It's a wall. I'm used to, you know, this. They're like, flow, flow through it. We're going to go right through it, you know. But, but they're training us, too, about this dimensional experience. So for, um, for the grounded human to be looking for civilizations and caves and things like that, they come and they go. That's, that's you know, they, they'll, like, present. Like, I've seen the crystalline cities. I got this beautiful experience, again, laying in the medicine wheel, and I get taken up to the, you know, this crystalline city over the, over the mountain, you know, it, it constantly changes. So we have to get used to things being dimensional because we are going to create in that way in the very near future. You know, we're already getting used to it. Things getting pliable, being more pliable, and, the, and teaching us that we have DNA expressions across time space. <laughs> I really want to talk about my Sasquatch BFF. Okay, I'll plow through it. My first encounter, uh, I'm camping, I've been gatekeeping, I do ceremony, I pray, I meditate, I'm a good person in the woods, I don't make a mess, I don't even eat my campsite. And this one night I'm hunkered down by, by my fire pit, I don't even make a fire because I want to see the night sky. I hunker down by my fire pit and Shasta's, you know, these are our trees. Giant, right? So you can see. There's no lower branches. And I'm sitting in my campsite, and all of a sudden this, this man like plows way back into the woods where I am, and it was just off. He was blaring music. It's too late. It's past dusk. There's a girl camping alone in the woods, and he got a little too close. All of a sudden he just pulls behind some manzanita right next to my campsite. And I'm, I'm like... This is not cool. And the moment that I say out loud, this is not cool, I see between two trees, Sasquatch. Whoosh, and he's beelining. He's like... And I'm like, whoa, that brother's on a mission. Oh my God, I just saw Sasquatch. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I was like, I, I heard the rumors, but I hadn't seen any yet. And whatever he did, he went straight to where the car was, and I don't know what he did, but that man jumped back in his car and plowed out of the campsite. <laughs> it was so cool. And I'm like, you know, bug, I'm like, that just happened. And I was like, whoa, Th thank you, you know, and I'm just like overwhelmed with gratitude. I'm like, thank you, thank you, thank you. And he, he came over, and, and they are so good. Wow. They appear and disappear just flawlessly. It's really beautiful, but they're highly telepathic. And, uh, but his language, he, he doesn't speak the way that I speak. He speaks kind of, uh, it's almost like fragmented. Um, so he comes over, and he, he bows to me, anything for gatekeeper. And I'm like, oh, I still get goosebumps when I think about that moment. Because I'm like, oh my God, he's been watching me. He knows exactly what I'm doing here. He's seen me doing this service. 
I am no longer the lone girl in the woods, like, because, you know, masters come and go, and guidance realms come and go and everything, but pretty much you're, you're camping alone physically, right, in the, wo in, in the woods. But now, all of a sudden, I have this, this like, guardian. So, so we have a relationship now. So when, uh, because I invited him, I was like, you know, the next morning, I'm like, are you, are you around? You know, <laughs> kind of thing. And I was like, this kind of, this is kind of sweet, you know, and everything. So he, he puts off a scent. It's, it's not very pleasant. <laughs> it does smell like somebody who lives in fur. Um, but it's, you're kind of like, did I step in? Some? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty strong. But uh, he'll put off a scent just to let me know that he's around. Um, but we created a relationship. So I learned how to uh, 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 knock rocks together in order to call him, and he'll answer back. At one point, I was laying in my hammock, and 10 of them came in one night. <laughs> and they make a very, um, they make, this is what they sound like. I can't, I don't know if I can do it. It's unmistakable. When you hear that in the middle of the woods and, and there's silence everywhere else. Uh, so he'll call, and I've learned how to call him too. So I'll let out that sound, and then it's like, eh, I'll hear in the background, and uh, just to let me know that he's around or whatever. And then sometimes I'll apologize if people are being um, abusive to the woods or whatever. You know, I'm constantly picking up the woods, and I'm like, oh, so sorry, so that's watch and everything. And I'll talk to him when I'm laying in my camp, and somehow, that thin layer of nylon <laughs> makes me feel impenetrable, right? So I'm <laughs> laying there and I'm talking to my Sasquatch and he will literally come up next to my, my head outside of the tent and stomp three times. You know, that's our symbol, our signal. Stomp three times right next to my head. I hear you, you know, kind of thing, right on. And uh, it, so there's been all this interaction. But this one time, um, he, you know, he very rarely will appear for a very long time. So there's still, there's still that, that barrier. But, uh, but this one time, I was, um, I was driving back in, uh, toward my campsite, and all of a sudden I see something running through the woods. And I'm like, oh, there, there's, already, there's somebody back by my campsite. And it was just like instantly, you know, I'm like, too fast for a human, too fast for a deer. Oh, it's a Sasquatch, you know. And I'm like, there he is. And he uses the trees. So he'll appear vibrationally. He's kind of glowing, you know, he looks kind of like a hologram almost, and he'll go from tree to tree, boom, 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 boom. and he's actually teaching me how to use the neural network of trees, how they travel, which is really cool. So I've been able to like tap into that, that network, but, but I was like, why is he appearing? Because I, I yelled up on the way up, I was like, I'll be back, I'm going up top to do gate work, and I'll be back and everything, you know, and I just kind of like send that message out while I was coming back down. And for some reason, he knows that I'm coming back. And he does this big loop, big, huge loop around my campsite. And I come back to my campsite, and somebody had abandoned a cooler somewhere in the woods. And it's plopped right in the middle of my campsite. And the three um, organite generators that Rion had given me, I had planted in the ground around my tent. And he had taken them out and put them in a little, tri a little triangle on top of the cooler. And I was like... Oh, uh, is this a game? Like we can't, we can't keep the. Uh, and I guess he doesn't like the resin. Um, you know, it's like unnatural or something like that. Sorry, Ryan. But um, <laughs> I was like, well, if it's a game, then I'm gonna put one back in the ground and see and see what happens. I haven't seen that yet. He'll probably freak me out and like leave it on my doorstep or something. But here's here's my point. Be a good witness. You know, be the, an accurate, clear witness when it comes to your contact experiences and life in general. Be the kind of witness that people can trust. You know, contact is part of the merge, ascending dimensions, and, and we become that for source as well as each other. Remember that mastery is the ability to allow others to witness their own divinity. And I invite you, this weekend, tomorrow, marks the three-year anniversary of weekly global meditations. There are thousands of light workers <laughs> doing this every single week for three years. Join us on Sundays. The field is very strong. We have four different time zones to uh, tackle everybody from Australia over to here. 
And please join us. Thank you so much. I am Sandra, and I'm witness.